Hi, I'm Brian, an engineer at Warpstream. In this video, I present a couple of features that Warpstream supports related to data schemas. The first feature is schema validation, which allows you to configure your agents to reject invalid records that don't conform to the expected schema. The way it works is that the producer would send over a serialized data which contains the schema ID to the agent. The agent would then use the schema ID inside the record to fetch the schema from the scheme registry. Finally, the agent would reject or emit a metric if the data does not conform to the schema. Currently, schema validation supports connecting to any Confluent compatible schema registries as well as AWS Glue. It also has native integration with Warpstream's own BIOC schema registry. Let's go into a demo. Here, we have a newly created virtual cluster. Let's go ahead and deploy the agent. For schema validation to work, you need to use the schema validation URL flag to provide a URL that connects to your schema registry. In this demo, I have a Confluent Schema Registry running locally on port 8087. After the agent is up and running, let's create a topic called foo with the Kafka CLI. Schema validation is configured per topic, so we have to modify the topic configuration to enable schema validation. Here, we set the value schema validation topic configuration to true so that the agent validates the record's value. Now let's register a schema to our locally running schema registry. I'm going to register an Avril string schema. And here we receive the schema ID of one. Finally, let's go ahead and produce records to the topic to see if schema validation worked. This example right here is, this, is the string foo serialized using Confluence wire format. We have the magic byte of zero, we have the schema ID of one, and we have the Avril encoding of the string foo. Because this is a valid record, we did not get an error and we can see that we have created a, a record. Now let's purposely create a raw invalid record by changing the a magic byte from zero to one. And we can see that it says here that it has rejected the record because of the invalid magic byte. Now let's revert the magic byte and instead change one to an invalid schema ID of two, which is non-existent. And here it's gonna say schema not found. And finally, let's try modifying six to five, which basically makes it an invalid scheme, uh, invalid data. And we can see here that it says that the data does not conform to the schema. And if we refresh this view, we can see that the number of records stay as one because all these attempts are invalid records, which are rejected by the agent. The second feature we'll cover is Warpstream's own BIOS scheme registry which is a scheme registry implementation that is API compatible with Confluence scheme registry. It employs the same zero disk BIOC architecture as Warpstream BIOC. This means that all your schemas live inside your own object storage buckets, and only things that will go to Warpstream's control plane are metadata such as schema IDs and compatibility rules. Now let's take a look at a demo. In this demo, I'm going to create a scheme registry from the console. You can specify which control plane region you want for your scheme registry. I'm just going to pick US East 1. You deploy the scheme registry agent the exact way you would deploy a Warpstream Kafka BIOC agent. You can do it using Kubernetes, Docker, or just the binary. In this demo, I'm going to use Docker. All you have to provide is the agent key, the virtual cluster ID, as well as the scheme registry port that you want the HTTP server to run on. In this case, I'm going to pick 1994. Once the agent is running, you can just connect to the scheme registry agent using the scheme registry URL that Warpstream generates for you, and it will automatically route to one of the agents running the virtual cluster. Now, you can start interacting with the scheme registry using HTTP requests. First, I'm going to register a schema by making a post request, and you can see that we received a schema ID of one. Now I'm going to use that schema to retrieve the schema. So I'm going to use the schema ID to retrieve the schema. If we go to the subjects page, we can also see the registered subject. Finally, if you just want to test for development purposes, you can just use the playground command to create a temporary account for local development. The playground command will also deploy a Kafka agent and a scheme registry agent locally so that you can interact with them. 